of the uh, member country forum, all the other distinguished persons who are here, I want to welcome their lordships for your meeting here in Uganda. You have done us an honor by coming here to have your meeting here. Thank you so much. Now, the, I think the Lordships, the Chief Justice of Uganda and the Chief Justice of Eswatini have spied on my remarks because they, 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 they captured some of the things I wanted to say. But I will find another way of saying them. In one of the local languages, they say "enkubito ergumu ibega," which means somebody to give you a strong blow. The strength of the blow depends on the muscles of the of the puncher. Therefore, right from our student days in our movement, we always advised the African intelligentsia, the, 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 the academicians, the technocrats, the judiciary, the lawyers, to always have an organic way of looking at issues. And in our view, and we, as, as the Chief Justice of Westwatin said, he actually made the same points. In our view, it is easier for justice to prevail when there are a few conditions in the society, it is easier. Number one, growth and prosperity. If the economy of the country is growing and creating prosperity, it is easier to work on the issues of justice. Yes, you can work on the issues of justice, even in poverty, you, you can do it, but it is easier. It makes work much easier. And that's what the Chief Justice of West Virginia was saying. If you have growth, growth in prosperity of the homes, of the families, of the individuals, then the state has financial resources. Because if the economy is growing, then the state also has got financial resources to support the judiciary. Now, prosperity will generate incomes for the families and companies and corporations. Secondly, it will improve livelihoods of people. And by livelihoods, I'm talking about better housing. If you see the housing in some of the places, it is not good at all. Better health, better nutrition, security, security, security. There's a lot of insecurity in some of the African countries now. Actually, it is like a, a collapse in many, of, of, in quite a number of countries. 
and you can definitely trace this that lack of security to, uh, to some factors, politics and so on, but also to lack of prosperity in the economy, which enables the, the government to have enough resources to, to support the army, because the army needs resources to be supported, needs money. So prosperity will give, give us incomes for individuals and for companies. Prosperity will improve livelihoods, as I have said, but also education. Education will cause enlightenment. People to get a new idea, to, to get more information. Because some of the, of the tensions in the societies are caused by lack of knowledge, superstition, belief in witchcraft. Why? Because the people don't have enough knowledge about science. Somebody is sick, then they think, they think he has been bewitched. Yet it is malaria. Malaria is, can, since many years ago now, you can discover which enemies cause malaria and you deal with it. So enlightenment also helps. Education brings enlightenment. That's why here in Uganda we have been pushing for the case of universal education. Everybody must go to school and stay there for at least 14 years so that he knows more about his body because that education educates you more about your own body. How is your body made up? Your biology. People Uneducated people don't know the, the biology of their, of their bodies. The environment around you and what is happening in the world. Now, when it comes to the, 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 the Chief Justice of Swatin touched on it, the question is, where does prosperity come from? The human race ha has been here for four and a half million years. And in that four and a half million years, societies, society and man have been evolving. In our, in our political schools, from the long ago, we have a, it's a study we call political economy. Political economy is not political science. Political economy is to discover the laws that govern the evolution of society. What, what are the stimuli? What are the stimuli that cause changes in society? And these stimuli have been identified. And I wish all the African intelligentsia could share them and, and be aware. Because the, the human society has been here for four and a half million years, mainly in Africa here, because until about 100,000 years ago, there were no other human beings in other parts of the, of the globe. They were all here. They were all Africans. It was about 100,000 years ago that groups started moving to other parts of, of the globe when 
after the last ice age. So therefore, much of these changes were taking place here in Africa. And if you study, you will see that what we call a primer, primer in a gun, is the trigger which, which fires off the, the bullet. We call it a primer. You can call it the, the initiator. What is the primer of changes in human societies? The primer we have detected in our study of political economy has been the, 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 the advance in science and technology always causes, causes changes in society. For many, for many millions of years, people were staying in trees. They were tree dwellers because it was insecure to stay on the ground. They had to stay in trees. But one and a half million years ago, here in Africa, we invented fire. When man invented fire, the people were now able to come from the trees and go into the caves because they had fire to, to light the caves and chase the snakes there and live in the caves. So they became, they became cave dwellers, changing from tree dwellers. That invention of fire was a big primer for social change, social transformation. Then the invention of agriculture, when people discovered that you didn't have to, because previously the people were hunters and gatherers, they would go out to look for food, for food in the bush and, and look for animals. But now they learned how to domesticate crops and domesticate animals. This was a big re revolution. And you can go and you can discover how Africa lagged behind. When Europe invented gunpowder, and for uh, those people, who the refugees who left here, those, those Europeans and other groups who left, they, they invented gunpowder when we did not have gunpowder here. And when they came back, they caused us a lot of problems because of just gunpowder, that gap, that technological gap. Then the, the invention of the steam engine, around 14-something, which, which shifted labor from muscle, muscle of human and muscle of animals, to machines. Machines now started being the ones to do the work. The steam engine for pumping water, then eventually they applied the steam engine to pull the, the train, and then other inventions, ele electricity, and so on. All these, the Europeans were able to come and colonize us because of that change in which we did not take part. 